This is WCPO 9 News. Thanks for joining us for WCPO 9 News. I'm Adrian Whitsett. Here's a look at some of today's top stories. A Covington police officer and a suspect, both still in the hospital this morning after a shooting in Newport last night. Both are expected to be okay. Kentucky State Police tell us this initially started as a traffic stop. The suspect and the officer fired shots. We're still working to get the names of both. The Covington Police Chief Bob Nader said he's working on getting in contact with the families. Happening today, the woman convicted in one of Cincinnati's most notorious murder cases is up for parole. Nearly 37 years ago, Linda Couch shot her husband in the head and tricked her kids into helping bury his body behind their Price Hill home. She was recently profiled on the Netflix series I Am a Killer. An officer who was there says he would never forget the moment Couch admitted to him what happened. She is currently serving a life sentence at the state reformatory for women in Marysville, Ohio. Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell is calling on Republican men to roll up their sleeves to get a COVID-19 shot. The senior Kentucky senator said there's, quote, no good argument not to get the vaccination. This comes as several polls show a significant number of GOP voters are leery about getting the doses. Nearly half the Republicans polled say they are not interested in ever getting one. Jennifer. Today's forecast will be the warmest we get of the work week. Now, here's the other thing about today's forecast. It's going to be pretty windy out there. As the system gets closer and closer, our high will end up in the low 70s under a mostly sunny sky with late day clouds rolling in. And rain chances at this point should be arriving between 9 and midnight. So you have all day, realistically, to get out there and enjoy this. But after sunset, that's when the rain starts rolling in. And most of it is on the light side. Those of you down to the southeast do see the potential for some hit or miss downpours in the overnight hours. And then a lot of this rain will be out of the city by even 6 a.m. tomorrow morning. But lingering down there to the southeast through almost the early afternoon as cooler air settles in. Guys, we're outside a caring place right off Mount Carmel Tabasco Road on the other side of the border here in Claremont County. And I can tell you that they have so many supplies for families right now that they are shouting from the rooftops for people to come get them. A caring place is a resource for moms and families to get assistance when they're facing a hardship or are just in a tight spot. They offer things like diapers, formula, maternity and kids clothes, cribs, car seat strollers and more. They're also able to do free pregnancy testing and ultrasounds. Assistant Director Polly Camry says that throughout the pandemic there has been a great need specifically for diapers and formula. But it's not just about giving things away. A caring place helps families learn to utilize resources available to them, like applying for WIC, food stamps and Medicaid. They serve about a thousand clients every year and as a nonprofit, they're relying on donations from the community and the generosity has been abundant this year. Leaders say that they are filled to the brim with goods and they're eager to get it to those who need it. We've been known to serve clients rather fast. Sometimes there's a waiting list for other centers that are like ourselves in the area where if someone calls, they have to set up an appointment and then it takes a long time to get the service services to them that they actually need. And we're pretty much on the same day. We help parents and families where they are currently and help them grow. The idea is to put them in a position where they don't feel like they have to rely on us so much. So if you could use a little assistance, all you have to do is call a caring place and Shauna or Polly, they'll both be here at 10 o'clock to be able to help you out. For now, reporting in Claremont County, Allie Kramer, WCPO 9 News. You might have heard about or personally experienced all the shipping delays this past holiday season. It was a major problem. But what if your package did arrive, but it was the wrong package? Unable to have a 50th birthday party during a pandemic, Tiffany Davidson was looking forward to this custom baked cake sent from her mother in Mississippi to her Mainville home. Her ring doorbell footage shows the UPS man arriving. I'm like, oh, my cake is here. And so I run to the door and I see this tiny, tiny box. But the tiny box had a label from her mom. Confused, Tiffany opened it. It's a modem. It, it was one of those return items when people send items back to the company. So she called her mom and learned she had sent the cake, but the labels were apparently switched. She said, no, something has gone horribly wrong. Turns out package mix-ups happen more than you'd think, according to online complaints. And the first thing you need to do is figure out whether it happened in transit with UPS or at the UPS store because the stores are independently owned. Her calls to UPS got nowhere. We don't verify if it's what you were supposed to receive. 
We contacted the UPS store's corporate offices where a spokeswoman promised to get to the bottom of the mix-up. But don't let this happen to you. When shipping a package, stay until the clerk affixes the label on the box and be sure to write on the form what exactly you are shipping so someone's birthday isn't ruined. Bottom line, if you have a package mix-up, file a claim immediately and don't give up so you don't waste your money. I'm John Matteris. Good morning, Tri-State. Day two of the Derek Chauvin murder trial starts today with prosecutors continuing to make their case. Yesterday, prosecutors argued in their opening statement that the former Minneapolis officer killed George Floyd last year after kneeling on his neck for several minutes. What happened in those nine minutes and 29 seconds when Mr. Derek Chauvin was applying this excessive force to the body of Mr. George Floyd? The defense team says illegal drugs and a heart condition killed Floyd. Mr. Floyd died of a cardiac arrhythmia that occurred as a result of hypertension, his coronary disease, the ingestion of methamphetamine and fentanyl, and the adrenaline throwing, flowing through his body. A 911 dispatcher and a man who tried to intervene during Floyd's encounter with police were among the first to testify. President Joe Biden and the CDC director are worried about another surge in coronavirus cases. Right now, I'm scared. Dr. Rochelle Walensky says she feels, quote, a sense of impending doom after seeing a 10 percent rise in COVID cases over the last week. President Biden called on governors, mayors and other local leaders to maintain a mask mandate to prevent another surge. Dr. Walensky says people need to continue wearing masks, avoiding travel and social distancing until more of the country is vaccinated. The giant container ship that's been blocking the Suez Canal for nearly a week is finally free, but the economic fallout is far from over. Data from shipping experts say nearly $10 billion worth of goods were disrupted each day. Now experts say this fiasco is making it much more expensive to move goods around the world and causing shortages of everything from exercise bikes to cheese. Several states have announced they're opening up vaccination eligibility for even more groups, but many across the country are still struggling to get an appointment. We wanted to know why. If vaccine allocations were based on population, states like Alaska are able to vaccinate everyone 16 and up, while others, like California, are still in the first phases of vaccine distribution. I played by the rules this whole time. Where is my appointment? Cancer left Kelly Malott immunocompromised and with lung and heart damage. I mean, I'm in group 1B technically here, um, but they ran out of vaccines within 1A. It has to be so frustrating. I have done nothing for a year. And then before that, the prior two years in my life, I was in the middle of cancer treatment. But not everyone is playing by the same rules as Malott. In Michigan, a nurse was arrested after police say she pocketed two syringes at a drive-in vaccination site. They should put her under the jail. I hope they give her the maximum. Not good. That's dangerous. <laughs> That's real bad. That's dangerous. I hope she get what she got coming. A 73-year-old couple traveled from Kentucky to Ohio to get their shots. The hospital that administered it said, quote, UC Health will offer vaccines to patients who meet the Ohio Department of Health eligibility criteria regardless of residents. This overall vaccine program that we have in the United States, its goal is to get as many people vaccinated as possible. We are seeing variability state to state, county to county. Where I live in Washington, D.C., we're seeing differences zip code to zip code. And so we really need a more uniform approach. And then there's those left waiting. For example, people without internet in states like Arkansas, which require an online appointment. Black, Latino, Native Americans, lower income workers have been hit the hardest. And we're seeing as vaccines are rolling out that many of these communities have the lowest vaccination rates. Experts say the Biden administration's goal of making vaccines available for all adults in May could cut through confusing eligibility guidelines. As for Malat, she's trying to stay patient. When do you think you'll get a COVID vaccine by? That's hard to say. I... <laughs> Right now, there doesn't feel like there's any movement. 
Here in California, the changes to the eligibility list this week opened the vaccination process up to more than 4 million people, including those 16 and older with disabilities or underlying health conditions. Only about 10 percent of California's population is fully vaccinated. For the second year in a row, the deadline to file federal income taxes has been extended due to the pandemic. I'm not an expert, but we spoke with lots of them and asked, what does this extension mean for taxpayers? The IRS extended the time not only for tax return filing for individuals, but also the time to pay that income tax on April 15th. You now have until May 17th. But no need to worry. It's not expected to cause a delay in refunds. I think that, you know, the IRS is going to continue processing returns as quickly as they can. It's important to note that the new deadline only applies to federal tax returns, not state ones. But some states have been given a little extra time. Because of the recent winter storms, Louisiana citizens now have until June 15th, and also Texas and Oklahoma. And the new deadline doesn't include quarterly tax payments for small businesses. That deadline for small business owners is still April 15th. COVID-19 can have many long-lasting symptoms like loss of smell. For one man, that loss could have cost him his career, but one doctor says there are ways to train your nose and smell again. Leading up to coronavirus, you always hear all the stories about it. Welcome to Chef Frank Bonanno's world. Never thought that I would get coronavirus. Um, I was super safe. In the world of COVID, restaurants like Frank's have had to adapt. And Frank has had to adapt even more after contracting COVID and losing his sense of smell. When I got it, that was actually the last thing on my mind, was losing my sense of taste and smell. And it didn't happen until about three days after my positive test that I actually lost them. And it was waking up one morning and being like, I don't taste this coffee. So then you realize I don't smell this coffee. Now in the past, viruses have been shown to do that. So influenza virus, common cold, does do that for a subset of people. Uh, but this was a large percent of the symptomatic people in COVID. Fortunately, Frank didn't suffer from many other symptoms, but when he was able to get back to work, he had to adapt. You know, fortunately, if I cook something, I have several people always standing around to say, does this taste okay? Usually the question is, yeah, it needs salt. But um, so, yeah, it, it was just very strange, but I, I wasn't worried. Um, and I was probably more grateful that I really didn't get very sick. Why uh, we lose the sense of smell likely is because it changes the olfactory sensory neurons that detect the odors. There must be an inflammatory response there. Dr. Diego Restrepo is a neuroscientist researching the loss of smell due to COVID. One problem with the nose, with olfaction, is that that is the one direct route to the brain. Um, and so one could get an infection of the brain. It seems like it does not happen with, with uh, COVID. Likely it doesn't happen because you lose your sense of smell. That's something that we're studying right now. In essence, losing your sense of smell may actually be protecting you from other damage from the virus. But Restrepo says there are techniques for those like Frank to regain your sense of smell by training your nose. Yeah, Dr. Thomas Hummel, he's an otolaryngologist in Germany. He developed smell training. And what it is, is you can do it at home. You basically have different smells to uh, smell each day. And there's a subset of people that actually benefit from that. Um, and so that's that's done. Uh, it, it's useful. That's what Frank did. Yeah, I ate my fair share like three or four times of eating the burnt oranges with salt and sugar on them. And while he does have his sense of smell back now, he realizes there are many who don't, but they'll get it back soon. That uh, short temporary loss of taste and smell is probably not the worst thing in the world to happen with what was going on. I'm Thomas Hoppo reporting.
A new trial is underway to help determine what Americans can safely do and not do after being fully vaccinated. This will help inform science-based decisions about mask use and about social distancing post-vaccination. The trial could answer if fully vaccinated people will still need to keep physical distance from others. Right now, even for those fully vaccinated, the CDC still recommends not traveling and continues to recommend masks and social distancing. We hope that within the next five or so months, we'll be able to answer the very important question about whether vaccinated people get infected asymptomatically and if they do, do they transmit the infection to others. The new trial is looking into how COVID-19 may spread by studying 12,000 college students at more than 20 universities across the country. One group of 6,000 students will get Moderna's vaccine immediately. The other half will get the vaccine four months later. When these people get infected, how often is that? If they're asymptomatic, how much virus do they have in their nose? And do they transmit it to people who are their close contacts. Earlier this month, the CDC issued its first set of recommendations on activities that people who are fully vaccinated against COVID-19 can safely resume. So thankfully, we've got it easy today. Temperatures warming into the low 70s. We'll see a mostly sunny sky. The only catch is the wind is going to be out of the south at about 15 to 20 miles per hour, gusting up to 30. So, I mean, if you are in a larger profile, profile vehicle, you will notice that for today. Tonight, the rain comes through, most of which is done prior to 9 a.m. tomorrow, unless you're down to the southeast. But, I mean, tomorrow is just going to be a mostly cloudy and cooler day with a high of 50. But it only gets colder in time for opening day. This forecast unchanged. And wind chills at the best on Thursday will be in the mid 30s. So we are just looking, unfortunately, at a bone chilling day. Now, as you all know, here in Cincinnati, it could always be worse. It could be snowing on opening day, but oh, still wind chills in the upper teens and low 20s throughout the morning. Oh, it's just going to be a tough day. And it actually gets colder Friday morning down to 23 degrees. So bringing in a true hard freeze here in the tri-state. We will get back to sunshine for the weekend and milder air in time for Easter. This year, millions of women in this country will suffer from some form of hair loss. And African-American women often have a harder time finding wigs that match their own hair. Empty chairs at salons across the country filled up fast once lockdowns were lifted. Patricia Wixon saw it firsthand. It is a normalcy thing that all women will talk about it who come in. For 30 years, she's been a hair replacement specialist. This year, though, she has noticed more women dealing with hair loss. Some of it, she says, is just from the stress of the pandemic. No one knows what to do. They're really terrified because they don't know where it will stop, the shedding, how it will continue. It's, it's stressful. About 30 million women in this country are dealing with some kind of hair loss. Some of it is from the pressures of COVID. Other times, though, it's from chemotherapy. For a woman, you know, there's always a second look. Of, it's not as acceptable. Many of the women who Patricia treats are black, and until recently, they didn't have a lot of options when it came to wigs that weren't made for white women. Why can't I have hair like my own hair? It's just a devastating process to, to lose your hair. That's where Diane Austin and her sister Pamela Shattuck come in. One in three black women in particular will be diagnosed with cancer, or any type of cancer in their lifetime. They are the founders of Coils to Locks. A few years ago, facing a cancer diagnosis herself, Diane realized there weren't any wigs being made specifically for black women. I think it's just, it's definitely an unconscious bias um, and sort of a lack of um, understanding that there's a different market out there. So these two sisters started making wigs themselves, ethnically inspired wigs, curly, natural hair. The wigs are now being sold in hospitals all over the country, most covered by insurance. You wanna look in the mirror and just feel like you have some control mm -hmm. over all of these physical changes that are happening. In the last 20 years, despite a universal drop in mortality rates, there's been a rise in the number of African-American women with breast cancer at an almost 42 percent higher rate than that of white women, making these wigs all the more important. There are patients who oftentimes will not take chemotherapy because they're afraid of losing their hair. As for Patricia Wixon, she no longer must alter wigs for her black clients. Instead, they now have dozens of natural choices to pick from. 
you're just not hung up and held back by some of the things that you were held back on. And so women are thinking, this is who I am. This is who I want to be. Helping women feel beautiful both inside and out, one hairdo at a time. I'm Chris Conti. underestimate kids because we're doing it right now and we're making a difference in our community. A group of fifth graders in Kentucky are proving there's no age requirement when it comes to doing good. They came up with the idea to create care packages to deliver to patients of all ages at their local hospital. It comes with a message from our team, a coloring book, an activity book, we have a stress ball, um, two sharpened pencils, and a pack of crayons. Since November, they have delivered more than 160 packages. As a Cub Scout, we like to help others. This nine-year-old Cub Scout in Michigan started a project to help foster kids. It's a cause close to his heart since he was a foster child once. During his free time, he stocks boxes with necessities for foster kids like blankets, clothes, stuffed animals, and more. Who doesn't love a great deal? And for one high school student in Ohio, bargain hunting has become a way to help people in need during the pandemic. She's using the art of couponing as a way to give back to shelters. I'm really happy that it's going to a good use and I'm glad that people are happy that I'm doing it. Over the last month, the teen has purchased more than $700 worth of toiletries, beauty products, and other items all for free, thanks to the coupons and rebates she used and she's giving it back to people who need it the most. It's just been a tough year, and I think um, people like her are kind of a, a shining light for us. 